How much does it really cost to own an electric car? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. It is widely accepted that electric cars can save you money in certain ways over the equivalent gas-powered cars. But there are also a number of significant costs that many consumers might not think of or might not even be aware of that make owning an electric car a lot more expensive than you might think. And I'm going to break down every single one of those costs in this video. But before getting into it, a huge thanks to Omvic, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, for sponsoring a portion of this video. So let's begin with the first cost of EV ownership that you need to be aware of, and that is the cost of charging. It is generally accepted that charging an EV is a lot less expensive than paying for gas for a regular gas vehicle. Now, of course, the real world savings vary depending on a number of different factors, but in general, charging an electric vehicle can be anywhere from 50 to 90% less costly than paying for gas for a traditional gas power vehicle. Let's take a look at this cost calculator comparing the most popular gas vehicle to the most popular electric vehicle as an example. Using an average daily commute of 32 miles or 50 kilometers, and based on the efficiency of these two vehicles, and the cost of fuel and the cost of electricity in my area, the gas vehicle would cost around $1,700 US or $2,300 Canadian per year, versus $334 US or around $450 Canadian for the electric vehicle. Which means that yes, in this example, the EV is around 80% less expensive to run. So you would be saving around $1,300 US or $1,800 Canadian per year, which does add up over time. But here's the thing, these savings really depend on the cost of fuel, the cost of electricity, and the type of charging that you use. Which brings us to the first major cost of EV ownership, which is public charging. If you make heavy use of public level 3 chargers, your savings are not going to be very significant because they can be surprisingly expensive to use, anywhere from 25 cents to 75 cents per kilowatt hour. Let's say the average is in the middle, around 50 cents per kilowatt hour. If we put that number into the calculator, look at what happens. Now the cost of charging an EV more or less matches that of fueling a gas vehicle, assuming you're only using public charging. So in order to maximize your savings, you really need to minimize your use of public charging and charge from home as much as possible, where the cost of electricity is a lot lower. But even this can vary depending on the cost of electricity where you live and the time of day you charge. For example, at my home, I recently had a level 2 EV charger installed in order to do my own EV charging tests. And what I learned is that the cost of charging an EV can range anywhere from 10 cents to 20 cents per kilowatt hour depending on the time of day. The cheapest time being charging overnight during off-peak hours. So to sum up, if you really want to maximize your savings with an EV, you need to check your electricity rates at home, you need to charge from home as much as possible, and you also need to maximize the use of off-peak hours when electricity is lowest. And that brings us to the next major cost that you need to consider with an electric vehicle, and that's the cost of buying and installing an EV charger. You can charge an EV on a household outlet, but it will be hopelessly slow and next to useless. So consider this a must have. High quality EV chargers typically cost anywhere from $500 to $1,000. And installing them can cost anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 depending on your home. For example, in my home, I had a 60 year old electrical panel which was simply not capable of handling the additional load of an EV charger, which means I had to install a brand new electrical panel, which brought up the total cost of the installation for my home to around $4,500. Expect a minimum cost around $1,000 if the installation for you is as simple and straightforward as possible. I should also add that you should absolutely not skip corners here by trying to use a cheap, lower quality EV charger or trying to do all of the electrical work yourself. 
always make sure to use a professional electrician. If in Ontario, one who is licensed by the Electrical Safety Authority and using proper permits to make sure the installation is done correctly and safely. And make sure to use a high quality EV charger that is certified and has the appropriate safety labels, which is exactly what I did. At my home, the charger that I have is the Emporia Level 2 EV charger, which, full disclosure, Emporia was kind enough to send and install and cover the cost. Those who regularly watch the channel know that I don't do product reviews, but in this case, I was extremely excited to give it a try because Emporia happens to be one of the highest rated EV chargers. The Emporia is actually the best EV charger according to a number of reputable outlets because it manages to check off all the important boxes. It's well made, extremely well priced, it's offered with both a J1772 connector or the Tesla NACS connector, and it even offers upgrades like a PowerSmart load management system which can potentially allow you to sidestep the need for expensive electrical upgrades as I needed. It also comes with an excellent app which allows you to monitor and manage your charging to save time and save money. Basically, it has all the important must-haves that one should look for in an EV charger. And I'm looking forward to doing a lot more testing with it for more videos. Now, let's move on to the next major cost of EV ownership that you need to be aware of. And that is the cost of out of warranty maintenance and repairs. It is true that EVs generally cost very little to maintain, at least for the first few years of ownership. They don't require traditional maintenance such as oil changes or even brakes, which typically last at least three to four times longer on an EV, thanks to their regenerative braking systems. Moreover, the electric drivetrains on an EV are typically maintenance free and they're normally warrantied for between 8 to 10 years depending on the automaker, which is a great thing. With all that said though, savings in some areas could be replaced by added costs in other areas. For example, tires are sometimes known to wear out faster on some EVs thanks to their added weight and the strong torque of the EV motors. EVs can also be more expensive and more challenging to repair when things do go wrong with them out of warranty. Some of them can be challenging to work on or require special expertise or special tools and finding a service center that can actually work on them properly can sometimes be quite challenging. Some reliability surveys are also finding that many EVs tend to experience more problems, likely because the technology is newer and not as time tested as regular gas vehicles or even hybrid vehicles. So, even though you might save some money on oil changes and brake replacement, owning an EV out of warranty could potentially still be a lot more costly and more problematic than one might think, depending on which model you buy. And that brings us to the next major cost of EV ownership that almost everyone seems to be at least a little bit worried about, and that of course is the cost of the EV battery. It is widely known that EV batteries are expensive to replace if it came to that. The cost can vary anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000 depending on the vehicle, which could certainly wipe away any savings you made up to that point. With that said though, the data coming out on EV battery life seems to be painting a pretty safe and positive picture so far. As mentioned, EVs come with an 8 to 10 year warranty on the battery, and EV failure out of warranty is a very rare occurrence. The EVs that are experiencing this seem to be the early first generation models, which used older, less sophisticated technology. New data suggests that modern EV batteries should last the life of the vehicle, which is 12 to 15 years for most consumers, and the likelihood of this being the case should continue to improve over time as EVs continue to improve. Understanding all of the costs involved is extremely important for any type of vehicle, and you also need to understand your consumer protection rights. Here in Ontario, for example, OMVIC is the regulatory body that oversees motor vehicle sales. Dealers are required to follow certain rules under the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act, which applies equally to EVs 
as it does to hybrids and conventional gas-powered vehicles. So if a dealer failed to disclose whether an EV you purchased was involved in a serious accident or has a serious mechanical failure that would have impacted your decision to buy it, OMVIC plays a significant role in enforcing these protections and ensuring car buyers are being treated fairly. To learn more about OMVIC, your consumer protection rights, and to access free car buying resources, just visit the OMVIC website. More information can be found in the description below. Okay, moving on to the next major cost that you need to be aware of for EV ownership, and that is insurance. Now, this is not going to be the case for everyone, but EVs can have higher insurance premiums than non-EVs in some cases much higher premiums. This is partly due to the higher cost of repair when they're involved in collisions. EVs are very expensive to repair and a damaged EV battery would likely result in a total write-off. So make sure to check your insurance premiums and shop around so that you are not in for a major surprise when that insurance bill comes in. And then we have the next major cost of EV ownership, which tends to be overlooked by a lot of buyers, but it's a very significant one, and that is depreciation. The data is showing that most EVs seem to depreciate more rapidly than other vehicle types. Some depreciate a lot more rapidly, which is a problem. For example, it's great if an electric vehicle ends up saving you, say around $10,000 in fuel savings, over a seven to eight year ownership period. But those savings are not going to mean much if that vehicle is also worth a lot less when you need to trade it in when that time comes. The reason for rapid depreciation is that over the past few years, many EVs were just far too expensive to purchase to begin with. So that is now reflected in the used vehicle market. Secondly, EVs are evolving so fast that the earlier versions are quickly becoming outdated and less desirable, which further hurts their value. And finally, we have the last reason, which are battery concerns again. Now, even though the battery failure rate on EVs is very low, the potential fear is still there, especially with out of warranty EVs that are much older, and this definitely hurts their value. These are all things that you need to consider, but, does this mean that electric vehicles should be avoided? Not at all. For many buyers, an EV can still make a lot of sense. Save for those who live where there are really strong EV incentives to lower the price. Those who can charge from home and have very low energy rates, and even for short-term buyers who prefer leasing, especially given that lease deals on EVs can be extremely good in certain areas, and leasing would eliminate any long-term concerns about repairs or depreciation. EVs can definitely work for a lot of consumers depending on the situation, but for those who are not quite ready yet or prefer to wait for the technology to improve even more, well, you do have alternatives. That's what plug-in hybrids and hybrids are for. In the future, I'm gonna make some videos on what are some of the best EVs to buy on the market and also do a comparison between a popular electric vehicle and a popular hybrid vehicle to see which one is less costly to own in the long run. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also take a look at my other videos by clicking these links over here. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to visit carhelpcan.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.